it's nefarious, man. Like the brain works in fucked up ways. The mind is one of the most deceiving, manipulative pieces of equipment, flesh, human bodies on earth. I never have trusted my brain. All of that weight lives in your head. And you are the decision maker. Psychology of entrepreneurship. Hi. It's Ron Slee. If this is your first volume, welcome. This is a weekly series where I go inside the mind of an entrepreneur, artist, athlete, academic to decipher what is the psychology of our decisions. There has been a lot going on in and around the world, as well as for me, we are podcast house sessions was like a miracle. I realized that I needed a break and I turned 40. Um, I didn't really want to have a party because I don't think that day my mother successfully gave birth to me is my day really but more about that for another volume maybe but uh, I did want to run eight kilometers um, when I turned 40 so I woke up and I did that and while I did that I thought about a lot of things but most importantly uh, the foundations and the platforms that were laid to allow me to run eight kilometers on my 40th birthday you know honesty i wish i had a bigger number to brag about but i don't uh, that was a hard 8k run because i hadn't been running much lately but i wouldn't have started running again if not for this amazing woman i'm trevenia barber and i am a mom and i'm a friend and I'm a wife, and I'm a business owner that is embracing everything light and dark about her to be a better person and to make a better impact on the world. Impact she has made. She made my dream come true to be a 40-year-old that could do a long run on his birthday around Brisbane City. It's kind of crazy how much we don't realize the impacts we make. It is important to realize the impact you make for yourself because I know of lots of times when I have been acknowledged for impact that I haven't given any weightage to. And as a result, haven't felt that impact at all. Trevinia has done lots and lots of cool stuff. But when I asked her for what they were, she first started to tell me what she didn't have. A lot of my stuff, you know, it's so interesting. I'm always, I I always compare myself to other people, right? And like, and I don't have an MBA and I don't have all of those things. But when I look at the fact that I, that I grew a business to seven figures and I did it while I was working full time, that's pretty cool. When I look at the fact that I did it while I was fostering and adopting children from the foster care system, that's pretty damn cool. When I think of how I did it while sustaining a marriage that everyone thought would fail, uh, you know, we're going to be 19 years in this year. You know, those are the types of things that I look back on and I think, holy cow, you know, you have done something. You created a podcast when most people start podcasts and give up after, you know, 10 episodes or something. And I'm here I am creating something that may not be getting the traction I thought it would, but it's, it's going somewhere and it's doing something. Uh, I look at how we've employed you know, hundreds of men and women and giving them opportunities to stay at home with their kids and, you know, use the skills that they've been given and go on the kindergarten field trip still. And those kinds of things are really powerful. Or if I look at clients that we've served and the humps that our team has got them over, those are the things that make me proud that I never would have looked at before. Today, we go inside the mind of a mother who is always giving. And All the giving isn't enough because she feels like she can always give some more. Context is everything and being aware of your environment and the foundations and platforms you've been given are key. Uh, Trevinia, what was it like growing up? When uh, when I was growing up, even, I mean, heck, as far as like six months ago, I used to hear from family Anytime I would accomplish something or do something, I would win an award. I'd be the captain of, captain of the swim team. I'd start a business, buy a house, whatever it was, book a vacation. And I'd hear from certain people in my family, must be nice, must be nice. And I know that it was a sense of 
jealousy, perhaps, uh, a, a sense of longing of they wish that their life had sort of looked like mine. But what I realized from that saying is that I stopped sharing part of me because I didn't want to make anyone feel smaller or less than. And I remember when I, when I hit the first seven figures in my business, I was so excited and I wanted to tell someone, but I felt like I didn't have anyone in my life and my periphery that I could share that accomplishment with. And luckily I happened to be going to an event in New York and I ran into a mutual friend of ours, Gary Nealon, and I ran up to him and I almost knocked him over. And if you've ever met Gary Nealon, he's a big guy. And I was like, Gary, I hit seven figures, you know, and, and he was just like, awesome, you did it. And it was the biggest contrast to what I'd heard my entire life of must be nice, you know? And so I, I was reflecting on that the other day and just how I think it's limited me in my, in my goals, in, in my, yeah, in me trying to achieve big things because I didn't want to feel like I was somehow leaving anyone else behind by doing those things. A new video surfaces online showing why some are worried Europe is opening its doors to potential terrorists. Those are reportedly Muslim refugees on a train in Europe chanting Allah Akbar or God is great. Now, to be clear, we're not saying that any of those people are terrorists or in any way affiliated with a terror group, but it does highlight just how many of these refugees who are fleeing violence in Iraq and Syria are Muslim. You must be wondering why you just heard that piece of audio. Here is why. Perspective is important. And misrepresentation is a huge part of what we believe in and protect ourselves from. If you watch that on television, you would have seen that the headline on that in bold letters is terrorists inbound, question mark. And the sub headline is taking refugees could open doors to jihadists. <laughs> I swear to God, if you watch that every week, you are going to think that terrorists are Muslim people. Just like if you don't think you can run the marathon, you won't. So perspective is important, especially if you listen to this podcast. We know that most of the media we have access to that we're supposed to rely on for proper news is just full of shit. We know that. And we've talked about that before on the show. But there are people that buy into the negative misrepresentation of certain groups of people because it already fits their beliefs or what they grew up being told. It creates fear for both parties and although the media is trying to convince us otherwise, we are not the ones in danger. The groups of people being misrepresented are. In 2019, a study was conducted by the Muslim Council of Britain to see how far-right leaders and commentators use TV debate programs to propagate stereotypes about Islam and Muslims. The study looked at over 10,000 news articles and broadcasts in the UK from 2018 and found that 59% of the articles analysed associated Muslims with negative behaviour, while more than a third misrepresented or made generalisations about the community. This article was a really interesting read and it will be in the show notes for anyone wanting to research further. Perspective is always important. We can't make the sense of the noise in our head until we give our thoughts and audience. I said that in my TED talk in 2017, and it is still true today. The must be nice statement can change meaning though. I feel like I go through seasons uh, when I can be accepting of who I am and where I am in my life. And then other times I'm not satisfied either. And I think I can see it now that it did take a lot of work to get where I am. And I can honor that work now. Instead of feeling like I haven't worked hard enough, I can sort of look back and say, oh, whoa, hold on. Look at all the things you have accomplished. That it must be nice. I can look back on that now and be like, yeah, it was. It was really nice for me to get to have opportunities that I've had or to meet people that I've met. And, and I can take that and switch it up in my head instead of it being such a negative connotation of like, you know, Trevenia is somehow thinking she's better than anyone else or, you know, she's trying to rub it in that she's accomplished these things. I can look back at it and be like, hell yeah, I have. Hell yeah, I have, you know, because I worked really hard. And that was something I wouldn't let myself see for a really long time. Perspective is everything. 
I never thought I was a words of affirmation person. I never, re never really would have said that, you know, somebody giving me accolades mattered. And now I have a folder on my computer that's literally called for when I feel like shit. And I screenshot things that people say to me or about me. And, uh, and I frequently will go to that now in to remind myself of who I am when I start to let doubt creep in and think that maybe I'm not good enough or I'm not skinny enough or I'm not successful enough. Um, I remind myself I've already done, you know, the things that I said I wanted to do and I've already made the impact that I said I wanted to make. I just forget really fast. I had an amazing conversation with the amazing Hal Elrod, who wrote the best-selling book, The Miracle Morning, for this show yesterday. And we break down affirmations and how you can construct affirmations that work, as well as the exact affirmations he used to cure himself from stage four terminal cancer, given seven days to live. So look forward to that volume on the psychology of entrepreneurship. But we are all looking to grow, right? I think that's what happens when you put down the mask and you're willing to be vulnerable and you're willing to go there and have conversations that maybe aren't politically correct or they don't, you know, I think we can sometimes filter ourselves and think like, I probably shouldn't say this thing to that guy because I don't know what he's going to do with that. You know, I told you stuff that you could very easily use against me if you wanted to, if you were that guy. But I think that there, there's just this deepening of relationship that happens when we just say, fuck it and go there and go there quickly instead of like reading the room, right? And like, how's this guy going to perceive this? And and you just, you did the same thing with me telling me stories of your life. And, and I think that that's where authentic friendship happens. I think that's where some of the most growth happens is if we just stop being so damn full of ourselves and worried about what the other person thinks and just go there. And that's what I was able to do with you that day. So what have we covered? Travinia is amazing. She has done lots of cool stuff, gives a lot. We covered perspective and misrepresentation. When we come back, we look at the other side of misrepresentation. Representation. The main objective of this audio project is to bring together entrepreneurs and creatives who share similar values so that they can find the courage to put out their authentic voice for the right people to hear, which allows for them to make their impact on the world. Every great movement started with a memorable speech. For access to full-length interviews, go to psychologyofentrepreneurship.com and click the button. Okay, so it's fair to say that everyone associated with this show is on a personal development journey. We all are. We all are learning ourselves. And the more I learn, the more I realize that I had no idea how much I didn't know. But I still know more than I ever knew. Talk about dichotomy. Sorry, Trevinia, you had something to add. He, this is something that I'm learning in my own sort of personal development and my personal growth is that I have sort of come out of the gates being this really strong woman who's, you know, faced all this adversity, blah, blah, and went on to, you know, create this epic business and great family, blah, blah, blah. And yet inside I was incredibly fragile, soft, um, insecure. All of these things that I hid from the world, from myself, I think, in a lot of ways, too. And I was trying to figure out, like, what it meant to be me. And I had this, uh, this sort of moment where I thought, I'm a dainty bitch. I'm a dainty bitch. I am 
I am soft. Uh, you know, there's this, this t-shirt ad on Facebook I see all the time and it's got a picture of Frida Hollow on it and it says, uh, not fragile like a flower, fragile like a bomb. And I'm like, I am both of those things. I am definitely fragile like a, a flower because I get wounded deeply when I hate that I get wounded deeply. And so that I'm fragile like a bomb because I explode and I am strong and I am powerful and all of those things. And I, I feel like I can't be the only woman that's like that. You know, I can't be the only woman that has built up this tough exterior to protect herself or to get wherever she thought she needed to go. And, and yet at the same time, I am dainty and I am kind and sensitive and fragile and insecure and all of these other things as well. Uh, so much so that I use that sort of strength as a shield to kind of hide who I am. And my own personal development has shown me that it is only in the sort of taking down of those walls of the that I've built up to protect me that I get to be who I really am, which is both dainty and strong, right? It is both. And so I think when I think of what I want men to know or other people to know about women is that it is yes and we can be both. Uh, and I think both are okay. At least I'm coming to terms with that in my own life, that I don't have to choose. This is really impressive. You started Independent of this documentary, a research institute, yes? Yeah. To study yeah. uh, gender in media. Yeah. How did, what gave you that idea and, and how do you even go about starting something well, like that? Right, uh, I, I didn't know, but um, it was because when my daughter was a toddler, I, I sat her down to watch preschool shows and videos and things. And the very first thing I watched, I noticed there were far more male characters than female characters. And I thought, you know, in the 21st century, surely by now we should be showing kids that boys and girls share the sandbox equally. And it was in everything. And, uh, and then just like I said, uh, I, I didn't, in, the, in that clip, I didn't intend to make it my life's mission, but uh, since nobody was noticing it, I decided I'm gonna get the data and then I can go directly to the creators and share it with them in a private way, you know, in a friendly way, you didn't know this, but, and, uh, uh, but wow, and, uh, and they were horrified and... Because they genuinely thought it had changed, yes? They absolutely, definitely thought it was different. And very often, it was weird, because very often they would name a movie with one female character as proof that gender inequality was fixed. And it was because it was an important character. Right. Like, uh, uh, well, uh, very often people would say, well, there's been Belle. So yeah. now everything is completely different now that <laughs> we've had bells. I have said this a few times, I think, in this podcast, but one of the things my dad said to me a lot was, Ronsley, don't forget the platform you've been given. You need to respect it. And with the Black Lives Movement and what has happened since my last scripted volume, it is more important than ever to understand the privilege we've been given, the platform we've been handed not long ago, there were world wars and the safety we are privileged to have right now is underestimated. There is a word for that, entitled. A lot of us living in luxury of having our basic needs met feel entitled that we need to upgrade to the next iPhone when it comes out. It is really important to respect what others have fought for to give you the platform to do certain things. And most importantly, what I care about is say what you need to say really important to give your thoughts and audience one thing that is actually striking me as i'm listening to you ronsley is the platform we've been given it doesn't matter how big or how small that platform is either is we've still been given a platform right and you know for for me who has you know X amount of subscribers on my email list or followers, it, like I still have a platform and it might not be Tony Robbins size platform, but I, I still have a responsibility to use it well, just as like I want my kids to use their platform, which is their relationship with their peers or at their church or, you know, wherever that they have their platform. And so that's a great way to look at it. And, and I think I, I would just hope that people aren't dismissive of it because they 
they think their platform isn't big enough, right, to make any kind of an impact and that they would be cognizant that we absolutely all have a platform. I talk about this a lot when I'm I'm training clients. I'm like, you have a culture in your business long before you've ever hired your first employee. <laughs> you know, you have a culture. And, and so similarly, I think we have a platform long before it's, you know, a million people too. Now, considering the platform you have, don't be like me and ignore the advantages and disadvantages I have with that platform. Well, I used to be like that. I'm learning to respect my platform more and more every day. There has been a lot of social media posts about asking the right questions in the current time. And actually, it isn't about asking the right questions. It is the right time though to listen. Listen without the need to reply. Listen, understand, listen some more. Why? Well, it helps you understand so that when you do open your mouth, you ask a question that isn't from a place of ignorance. After all, information isn't a shortage anymore. And while you're listening to Trevinia's next story about being the only female on a panel of men, it is important to remember that representation is as important in understanding anything. You know, I've had the experience of being the only female on a panel uh, of men. I'll never forget it. I, I was at a Todd Herman event and I was sitting with, you know, Nick Kusmich and Chris Winfield and Rob Cosberg and Todd Herman and then like me in the middle. And it was a very proud moment for me, not because I was up there sitting with a bunch of dudes, but because I felt like I had a responsibility to represent women well uh, and and to speak, not to just wait until I was called upon to speak, but to actually be heard in that moment. And, you know, Todd was gracious and, and gave me the opportunity to use my voice there at his event. And, uh, and I think that that's the, the thing that we need to make sure we're doing often as women specifically is is, you know, we're not just sitting in the shadows, like waiting to be called upon, you know, that we are using our voices powerfully. I love that you always talk about how women were the first entrepreneurs, you know, because we were moms and we we're used to sort of figuring it all out and making something out of nothing. And, and that does give us a very specific outlook and perspective on things that I think a lot of uh, events, a lot of uh, conferences or programs, they need that voice. But a women's only conference or women's only panel, those types of things, uh, I think that's, it's lifting up a female voice, but it's also, it's also saying a male voice doesn't matter either. So I don't know if that's, solving the problem that you say you're trying to solve it, personally. I think that's a slippery slope when you start to, you know, women's empowerment issues and femininity and all that jazz is good, but we can't do it at the exclusion of the men that we, we want to serve either. In talking about how companies can build a more inclusive presence, Cricket Administrator James Sutherland stated that, an imbalance in language and symbols reinforces a history where women and girls were not included and celebrated in traditional male environments. Many organisations will be able to identify opportunities to address this through genuinely reconsidering the face that they are projecting both internally and externally. So here's the deal. It doesn't matter what makes you wake up in the morning and live the life you've chosen to live. It all starts with you. It's your world. You have to take care of it. You have to take care of you. You have to value you. Understanding these amazing humans I've had the privilege of interviewing helps give us perspective to hopefully give you the sign you need and the nudge you need in the right direction. I'm envious of those, those men and women that can consistently care about themselves. And I think that for me, it comes down to, do I think I'm worth it? Like on the inside, I think I can tell you, Ron's like, oh, sure. I, I know my value and I believe I'm worth it. But when it comes down to the core, I think a lot of us struggle with our own sense of self-worth and, and value of if we're really worth the effort it takes to, 
to care about ourselves in the way we actually should. You know, I remember when I started training for a half marathon and I was mapping out the calendar of what it was going to take because I sort of shuffle. I don't really run, right? It takes me, you know, sometimes when I first started, I was running like 16 minute miles. And so for me, the thought of five miles, well, that was like my morning, you know, it, it wasn't just a quick 50 minutes and I'm like in and out. And I started thinking like, I don't have time for this. Like I literally don't even have the time it takes to train. And it was a hard decision for me to have to decide to lock those days into my calendar to make it happen. I'm not sure about you, but when Trevinia spoke about the folder she has, the one where she saves all the good messages. Yeah, that one. What's in that folder, Trevinia? We had a client one time tell us that he thought that getting a, an executive assistant was going to, you know, s- save his day and save time in his day. And he said it ended up saving his marriage. That was really powerful for me. Um, my nephew, uh, there's a, a quote or a screenshot in there from my nephew of, it's a picture of my house that he posted on Instagram, but he commented about me and how I meant so much to him because I was always encouraging him. Uh, I have little notes from my my children. They'll come in here and write on post-it notes like, I love you, mom, and I'll take a picture of that. Um, there's, uh, there's a note from one of the gals on my team. She donated a kidney uh, earlier this year, and she was thanking me for her donating a kidney. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she said, never would I have been able to do this if I had a nine to five job that I was like worried I had to hurry up and get back to, right? I wouldn't be allowed to take the time off. We have another team member whose grandmother was dying. And just off the cuff, one day on a call, on a team call, she said, the thing is that she was the most sad about her grandma passing or you know, preparing to die is that her grandma said that she had always wanted to have a five-star meal and she'd never had one. And I said, well, let's have, let's get her one. And so we hired a chef and, and they came and, you know, they did white linen and fine china and, and she got to have a really amazing five-star meal with her grandma before she died. And, um, and so her thanking me for that, uh, things like that, it, it tends to be nothing about money or how many likes I got on Instagram or, you know, how many courses we sold. And it's just more about relationships that I've built and how I've been able to, use my time or my resources or whatever it was to make an impact somewhere else. It always comes down to relationships. Psychology of entrepreneurship. Coming up on the psychology of entrepreneurship. Asking customers what they want um, is fraught with all sorts of challenges. Often the customer will tell you what they think that you want to hear or they don't actually really know what they want because what's in their conscious mind is different to their subconscious mind. Factory farmed animals have to have crops grown for them. And this blew my mind. More than half of the world's crops that are grown aren't fed directly to humans, they're fed to animals. I sometimes think about it on a scale of like banana to Oreo, an Oreo being a highly processed food, a banana being a fresh food. So yeah, everything can kind of sit on a processing scale like that. Psychology of entrepreneurship. I interviewed Trevinia because she is the founder of Priority VA, an executive VA service. Her company has worked with entrepreneurial legends like Michael Hyatt and Amy Porterfield, Dot Herman, Ray Edwards, She has created multiple courses and launches for her business, as well as lots and lots of other people's businesses. She is a mother. uh, She is a friend. She is a deliverer of favors, a believer in hard work, and a provider of freedom to herself and the people she works with. This is a Must Amplify production. Special thanks to every guest expert that has appeared on the show. Editing, voiceovers, and sound design by Kelly Bunnyman and Tiago Vega. Guest research and content by Claire Gould and Corinne Castles. Project managed by Kelly Bonnyman. Produced and hosted by me, Ron Slivas. For more episodes and where to listen, go to mustamplify.com slash P-O-E. Hey! hey. 
It's Kaylee from Must Amplify. I'm the sound engineer for this volume of Psychology of Entrepreneurship. I'm part of the team that made this production come alive. I work as a part of a global team with our studios based in West End, Brisbane, Australia. If you would like a podcasting checklist, email me at kaylee at amplifyagency.media. That's K-A-I-L-I at amplifyagency.media. We specialize in finding your voice and making sure it's heard by the right people. If you are considering whether a podcast is a good idea for your business, check out our other show on shouldistartapodcast.com. Are you still listening? Here's a little gift to you for sticking around. Don't be like me and did what I do. Ugh. Don't be, don't be like me and through genuinely, through genuinely reconsidering, genuinely, many organizations, oh, no, I can't laugh. Okay. Perspective is important and misinterpretation, uh, misrepresentation, that was hard.